Hey, look, a second floor to the dorm, just like Yoko said. The gate's open, we can finally check out the second floor of the door, which means I have to do it. You are physically required to do it. Oh boy. This is the second floor of the dorms? Looks like some ancient ruins. Or, no, it's more like a battlefield, like a bomb blew up here or something. Hmm. It's exciting. Hmm. Oh, most interesting. Ooh, bloodstain. Most interesting. And it's red. Red bloodstain? Never have I seen such a thing. <laughs> I don't know why you're so entertained by yourself doing that. Because it's awesome. Oh, let's see if the bathrooms are in good repair. What was that? There was an eye. Huh? There was an eye on the wall. Where? T was out in the go forward there. To the left. To the right of me. It was on the wall out there. It is on the wall out there. There. Okay. The Illuminati bitches. Maybe. <laughs> There's also a giraffe, so... The Illuminati giraffe. Basically. What a nice office. This room doesn't really feel like a student's room. It's the mastermind's room. It has a more adult atmosphere. Correct. It's the headmaster's private room. Kyoko. Indeed. I've been through this room several times, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. Um, a regret? Okay. Kyoko looks almost meek right now. She must be thinking about something I probably shouldn't bother her. Okay. Check this place out. Hey, a computer! Is it connected to the internet? There's a PC on the desk. It must have belonged to the headmaster. It would seem... Whoever used this last, it looks like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. Was that you, Kyoko? The PC still has some search results left on it. Eh. Then we might be able to get some info on the ultimate However, despair. There's not much, though. Nothing we don't already know. In other words, the ultimate despair isn't one individual, but instead points to some kind of group. The group responsible for the tragedy, which happened one year ago. They're the worst sorts of people whose driving force comes from despair. However, and that's all there is. Not too much whew, else. But I guess that's the best he could come up with as a complete curi 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 yuri failure. But any information on the mastermind is helpful. You don't have to be such a bitch about your day. I don't know. I'm just saying. I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. I see. That's a good outlook to have, I guess, loser. Shut up! <laughs> Ultimate despair. Why does this look weird? Oh, there's a strange gap in the wall. It's like it might be a door or something. Is it some kind of design mistake or a construction defect or something? So... There's a gap here, but not just any normal gap. It's the gap in the underground railroads. Or underground. I think you like lost. Subway I, th system. I think you lost. It. Subway system. I think you lost it. it. I can feel a breeze coming out. A Indeed. breeze? There's likely an other space, an open space on the other side of this wall. The other space. Ooh. Open space. What does that mean? You mean like a hidden room? I think I might know how to open it. You know how to open it? Did you figure out some kind of trick Indeed. or something? A very easy trick, yes. So easy, I'm not sure you can even call it a trick. She pushes the door open. I saw a program on the PC I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should open right up. However... But I don't have a clue what the password might be. All we know is it's probably made up of letters or numbers. No shit, Sherlock. Go on. Oh, you're right. There's not nearly it's enough to true. go on. I looked through all his paperwork, all files on the PC, everything I could think of. I learned more about him than I had any desire to, but nothing that might have been his password. <sighs> when I think of how much time I wasted on this. 
Jeez. So there's a hidden room she couldn't get into. That's what she meant by regret. I think we can assume that there must be some kind of clue waiting in there. Maybe for her, but there's more to it than that. Anyway, if she wants to get in there, we need to figure out the password. If Goku can figure out it, well, no way I do. I stand a chance. No way. There might be a chance. The password could be something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of, or something she didn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? What? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. The way she talked about her dad, the idea that he would use her name as a password. Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I try it, just to be sure? Well, it's not like you need my permission. If you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. Oh, okay. You know, I'm glad I thought of trying Kyoko's name. But if that's not it, it just might hurt Kyoko even more. Hey. If you're worried about me, Makoto, don't be. There was never a friendship between us. I guess I already know that your guess is wrong. Okay, in that case, here goes nothing. I collected myself to turn myself to face the computer. Let me just type the password here. I typed in her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were tense, slightly trembling as I finished typing it in. Beep. Beep. And it was right. What? That did it? Kyoko, it worked! Why? Kyoko? Without looking at me, she disappeared into the hidden room. She looked grim. Kyoko, I know having your preconceived ideas being shattered is life-threatening and all, but come on, we got something to do. Hey, Kyoko! I may as well not have even been in the room. Her gaze was fixed on only one thing. The present! present, wrapped in covered in with such joy. That made it so unusual. There's a brightly colored box here, seems totally out of the place here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Should we open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe from it. But I mean, you can't not open it. <laughs> no, okay. you can't ever fucking control yourself, can you? Be careful, Makoto. Why? Do you think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous. But surprising, probably. Huh? It would seem... If it is what I think it is. Dirty condoms. The one that led to you being born. It's broken. Okay. At very least, it's not something you'll be happy to see. Wait, so do you know what's in there? Anyway... Just don't scream or anything, okay? Oh, so it's probably like a severed head. Are you saying there's something that'll make me want to scream? Okay, I'm just gonna open it. Step by heavy step, I approached the box. I took a deep breath and took hold of the lid. He's just opening it, right? Slowly. Ever. So. Slowly. I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I stole a hesitant glance inside <gasps> and... <gasps> ah, I screamed anyways. At a much higher pitch than I could. Kyoko's advice was no use. I left out a trembling cry. Hmm. What was in the box was bones. Human bones. The last thing I expected to find is a bright, joyful box. I mean, who else could have possibly imagined? I see. I don't know anyone who's been here long Just enough. Just as I thought. What? It's gotta be your dad's bone. You remember at the beginning? With the spaceship thing? Yeah. How it ended up with bones at the end? Hmm. What was in the box, it was all wrapped up so I never would have guessed what was inside. Human bones. Oh, let me talk. Just as you thought, how could you have known that? I mean, there are bones in there. Human bones. Well, it's not that I was specifically thinking bones. I just had a feeling it would be his body. It's pretty much the same thing. A dead guy in a box. My father. Huh? Wait, what about him? Correct. That face says she has closure. That's kind of creepy. What you found in the box. These bones. That body. That's my father. Or at least what's left of him. Are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been searching for? Hold on. How can you know that for sure? How do you know that's so, him? Given all the information we already have, that's the only possible answer. 
So the same person may very well be the mastermind. Not according to the Vile Headmaster's man is late thirties. So it may be possible, even likely that somewhere in the school right now. <laughs> uh, that's all for all. the only people who have taken a step in this school have been the sixteen students. Alter Ego said the headmaster was probably here in the school. But the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were us 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume. In other words, that most likely my father was in this school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Or no, she wasn't calm. She was only trying to seem calm. She said it, she said it was just as she thought, so she just knew it was a possibility. But I have to believe that at some point she wanted to be proven wrong, which is why she never looked in the box herself, even though she had plenty of chances. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she cut off all ties. Was that all there was to it? Nana gave up some pride to reveal wanted to come in and say that to him. Was she really willing to give up her pride just for that? I couldn't help but wonder. Huh, this picture. It's all faded, it must be pretty old. Wait, is this a picture of... The only girl with purple hair we all know? Maybe. Hey, Kyoko. Why would you... Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free of the past. And yet, despair. Probably the most despair she's felt. To now find something like this? So, what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. There's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all the time, he must have really cared about her. Why? No offense, that's like, not enough. That's like, I have a picture of you. Doesn't mean fucking shit. Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time, he even stole the opportunity I had to move on. Has there ever been a worse father? Probably Monokuma. Kyoko. This father can seems the kind of place you do look to find a clue. I should take a closer look. I don't think Kyoko would like some stranger uh, like me touching her dad's hey. stuff. It's fine. Check whatever you want. Are you sure? Okay, then. I went through each door one by one, starting from the top, but all I found was piles and piles of unrelated documents. He was pretty dedicated to his job, huh? Well? It's just because he didn't have anything else. He could have inherited our family business, our legacy. Instead, he left it all behind. Now, if, if he couldn't even handle a job like this, he would have been that much more of a failure. To, wait, wait, to be the headmaster of, an, of the single most prestigious academy presumably in the world? Are you kidding? That's like top of the education field. Go fuck yourself. Either way, I'm sure he couldn't... She's just really salty about the whole abandoning thing. My boss used that word recently. Salty? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's become regular lingo nowadays. Well, no, his exact, because my boss is like 45, his exact words were, as the kid, as, was it, as my son says, you're a little salty. And I'm like, yeah, a little. Um, I'm sure he couldn't stand the thought of that, and it made him desperate. Okay, whatever you want. The headmaster's desk is probably hiding some of my clues, so I really want to check it out, but I don't want to talk to his ass without, without her permission. Yes, you'll hey. be fine with it. Don't worry, because... I'll be fine with it. Same thing as before, blah, 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 blah. Okay, checking the desk. Starting from the top, I open all the just drawers and the inside I rummage through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents in the last drawer. Huh, is this? This is an e-handbook, right? And it says a label on it that says in case of emergency. Well, this feels like an emergency. I found some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other desk. words. A handbook with no limitations, given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what this is. So, like the master key for of handbooks. I think you're probably it right. Seem... It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? Huh? But Kyoko... I... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. Is it really okay? Hey. Listen, Makoto. Huh. I'm the headmaster. Actually, the mastermind. 
you were supposed to say, can I ask you a favor? And I say, a favor? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask this of you, but can you please throw the trial for me? I really don't want to <sighs> die. I know it'll inconvenience you that much more, but... But he already did that once. Hey. Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a little while. I'd just like to be alone for a bit. Kyoko. Don't worry. I'm fine. Oh, I just need to calm down a little. Just a second. I need to get my emotions in order. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you had with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul, but... Maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again someday. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory. And this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be so easily solved. You're right. I'm sorry. Anyway. Once I've got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time to myself. To plot. Oh my goodness. I don't actually- Is, is everyone the mastermind now? I don't actually think she's, um, the mastermind, but... Yeah. See you later. Adios, amigo. Time to go use this e-handbook for very good things. Is she really okay? Kyoko must be in... It must have been a complete shock to her. I mean, it was a shock to me. Find out what happened to the headmaster. Yeah. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the hassmer, killed Kyoko Fathers. They killed him. Headmaster is dead. No! Oh, headmaster. Okay. <laughs> but we were wrong about the headmaster wasn't the mastermind. Which means the mastermind's true identity is... <laughs> yep, one of the students. One of the 16 students is the mastermind. 15 of us met in the main hall in Mukuro. Add Mukuro to the mix and you get 16. That including me, the only 6 of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Even Mugura. Even she's undeniably dead. Even the ones left alive are. Me? Oh my god. Byakua. Hiro. Togo. Hina. Kyoko. And that's everyone. Only those six people are still alive. And there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. There just has to be. Makoto doesn't want to believe one of the six can be the mastermind. That's because Makoto's a fool. I pity the fool. I pity the fool who does drugs. Mr. T. Yeah. This room is filled with lockers. Most of the Hope Speak students came before us. The class before us must have used these lockers. What if I can open this locker? Rattle, rattle, nope, locked. There's a card reader installed. How do I get it open? After all, it's pretty similar Headmasters. to the one to the second floor. Use your ebook handbook. You can't use it. Okay, let's just give mine a try. I took out my handbook and ran across the reader, and then, bzz, no luck. Maybe only the locker's owner can open the machine. None of us can do it. Wait, but I have this, which was the reason I went to the other thing first. Okay, let's give it one more try. Took the emergency handbook, ran across the card reader, and beep. All right, just what I was hoping for. And let's see what we got inside. Hero. <laughs> the thing is practically empty. Closer than you think. Just some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure who it is, but something written on the inside it could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. Looks like a girl's handwriting. And all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote them must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, but when uh, my hand froze when I got to a certain page, I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak Academy into a shelter, and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the owner, uh, the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. 
The point is to keep our student prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of the country, our world, it's not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to serve as foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. And that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a self-decision without consulting anyone. I can't imagine a worse father. I can only wonder who might that be. Yeah, it's too easy. What's too easy? Th that makes it Kyoko. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was. I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko couldn't be anyone else. Even the game doesn't make doesn't even think about making you think about it. But if this belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said that she hasn't seen her dad since she was little. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly, just happens, so happens to be Mastermind and my father. I guess it could be Kyoko in the sense that she helped you, and like, she being the Mastermind understood the rules, and... What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question mark spinning through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, so organized, and scrawled. Bear walks among us, and so we. I. Okay, what is this? What does it mean? I have no idea. How could it possibly make any sense? Spare walks among us, and so we survive. There's a second despair. I took the mission and I ran around. Oh, I'm not being proud. I like, open oh, was inside. Oh, it looks like something's actually inside. Hey, look at that. Crystal ball. The locker's totally disorganized. Whoever it belongs to probably has the organization problems in every part of their life. Hero! This is actually what I was thinking was in the other one, when he said a hero was in the locker. Bet you're not that far off. <laughs> this is a crystal ball, huh? Crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used his locker. It's just not possible. Oh, my bad. There's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks stack in no particular order. There's dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuffed this was didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act as casual and natural as possible, I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. But the moment I look inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have developed evaporated. What? There's no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook... What if he's the only one that's not in on it? Inside the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakuri. What if every single other person in this is in on it? Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of different classes, which would mean he attended classes here? No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to this school at the same time as the rest of us. I mean, we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes, so what is this notebook? Locker notebook is added. A uh, deck of playing cards, no tarot cards. Used for telling fortunes, just coincidence, right? Okay. The more I see, the less it makes sense, but these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are there things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems to belong to Hiro, and a pocketbook that seems to belong to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation, but I want to find that out, and I have to keep moving the investigation forward. I have to believe in everyone. This is the headmaster's room. I've heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. Ah, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Byakuya. Find anything interesting. You came... Well, you came to the right place this time. Would you like to see something interesting? Yes, I would. What do you mean, something interesting? Take a look at this. It was on top of the pathetically ostentatious desk. Words. Class 78 student <laughs> registry. Contains profiles for all of us and Mukuro. So in other words, Apparently, Class 78 refers to us. Wait, when we found Mukuro's profile in Kyoko's room. I see. That's right, it had mentioned Class 78. So this must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in other there along with the rest of us, there can be no doubt Mukuro was a student here at Hope's Peak Academy, just like the rest of us. Mukuro Gisabo, 16th student, that must be how Kyoko learned about it. But it seems Kyoko was in a hurry. Huh? What do you mean? I'm talking about when she stole it. 
the uneven tearing, the way the paper had been crumbled, she must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in to get it, I'm sure she wants to get out as fast as possible. But what's your point? Well, she was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page? Correct, Mukuro's profile actually had two pages. One. So, in other words... In other words, when it comes to this profile, there's more information about Mukuro than that we still didn't have. What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It no, seems, I can't. It seems to be... I've been reading for a while. I, I'm questioning my ability to read right now, but... It seems... I think I can read. It seems to be the sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster hmm. himself. I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us such an interesting clue. I was half listening to Byaku as I skimmed through the report. <laughs> Mukuru re reappeared suddenly, and in the background of the entity floats, close but just out of reach, the entity known as the Ultimate Despair. Right now I can't be sure if this is a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Mukuro definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about this. I need to push forward with my research into the Ultimate Despair. I need to pay attention to Mukuro's behavior too. It's just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenrir, when she entered Hope's Peak, she didn't display any signs of battle wounds or scars. The fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I did decide that she's a danger to other students, I would be forced to take all reasonable measures. Mukuro was a part of the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But wouldn't that mean Mukuro and the Mastermind were allies? So why? Why did they kill Mukuro? Plus, even the Headmaster seemed to be afraid of what Mukuro was capable of. They would have had to take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the Mastermind is even stronger than Mukuro was. What? What's wrong, Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought. But I should probably point out one other thing. There's also an important bit of information within the file that you should know. What is it? Did you notice the picture in there? The picture of the girl perhaps you've never seen before. <laughs> A girl who seems to be included as part of our Class 78. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. Hmm. And further information about that girl is included in the file. 5 foot 7 inches 97 pounds and even lists her vitals 31, 22, 32. Well, what do you think? What do I think? You're asking me like she has a nice five body? Foot seven? Stop talking. You're a hopeless idiot. What I'm so trying to tell you is maybe you want to keep that information in mind for later. That's dangerously underweight. Not for a soldier, I guess. No, like, you should be heavier than any average person because you have all that muscle. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse and maybe you'll think, Oh, could that mean... Oh, wait, is he trying to say... There's a chance the body isn't actually Mukuro? Is that what he's saying? Personally, what I'm thinking seems all but impossible, but it wouldn't hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I was trying to say. Do what your information... What you do with that information is your business. So I'm back to being Byaku's Arab boy. Yep. Good times, good times. Oh, is Kyoko Mukuro? She was Mukuro's taken profile. away from her family when she was a child. She... Uh, she... Has scars on her hands. She... Uh, there were not any scars on Mukuro's body when she entered the academy. No. Oh. Hmm. Oh, and one last thing. It's also assumed that everyone, all the other 15 students had profiles in there as well. Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of advice from me to you, so I suggest you pay attention. Advice from me? You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. It's not like we're getting along, she's just a lot of help to me. Well, don't put that much faith into her. In other huh? words. The cost of faith might be more than you can aff cost to afford. What are you saying? <laughs> just what I think. Call it a hunch. A hunch? <laughs> But my hunches tend to be proven right. My advice is for you this time. Take it or don't, as you will. I'll keep it in mind, thanks. Okay. Up oh, here we go. Um, this is a school announcement. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. So no, it's not over. He just 
is offering something. What, now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious, but no doubt about it, this could be a trap. But even knowing that, he said to go to the gym, right? Oh, hey, hero. Ah, oh, Makoto! Why are you acting so surprised? Uh, um, oh, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? Uh, I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What did he say? Uh, listen, sorry, but I... I gotta go! Hero, wait. There's no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hero! It's like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. He was trying to hide something from me. Hmm... Yeah, I guess they didn't get to do one of these this chapter, so they gotta do this instead. I am Hello! Welcome, welcome. Are you ready for your final hit? Well, it just happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? Okay. This must be the envelope. Ooh, just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. Don't worry, let's just get on with it. Monokuma's group of words didn't make me feel any better, so I picked up the envelope and opened it. What I found was a single photograph. It featured a bunch of fa uh, faces I recognized extremely well. It was everyone who'd come to Hope Speak at the same time as me. Wait, but... Someone beyond Sayaka... She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, wait. Keep going. I want to see the other side. She's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. Well, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room, we looked at that file. Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that girl is... Wait, why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. We're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like that. They're all in on it, aren't they? Now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not here. The picture has 15 other students, but not me. But I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I just went to junior high of Saika, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived at the Hope Speak Academy. So it's natural for me to not be in the picture, but what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone else, I thought everyone else was like me and didn't know each uh, didn't know each other until they got here. But if this picture is real, what could that mean? Could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is. <laughs> How long are you gonna keep that rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you gonna do? I kind of get in the way standing there, you know. Hmm. So I mean, get out. But, I told you, I'm not fielding any questions. What kind of mystery would it be if I gave you all the answers? That would be totally out of left field. love. I guess that means he's done talking. Damn it! Group photo. So the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. With the confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. How does this count as a hit? That made me even more confused. What's Mama Kuma going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which means everyone but me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear this all up. No, I have to clear all this up. From the dumb bitch, Kyoko. You're not liking Kyoko as much as you did, do you? I actually think she's in on it. Like, in some capacity. In fact, I'm starting to think everyone's in on it. You don't think that's what the photo's supposed to make you think? There's no, it's the other photos, too. This isn't the first one. There's all kinds of stuff I want to talk to her about, but... Better give us a... What? Okay, fine, whatever. Can't go talk to her about what? this. Rubble, rubble, rumble, rubble. Maybe this isn't about testing the resolve of an ordinary person. It's about testing the resolve of... Well, look, heroes in there. It's about testing the resolve of a... What? Maybe this isn't about testing the resolve of the, or the great, greatest 
youth we have. Maybe this is about testing the resolve of an average youth. Hey, hero. Hey, hero. Ah, <laughs> Makoto. What's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. No, I. No, sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified little rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I found. It's like he's avoiding me. It's like he's afraid of me. Why? I decided to visit the bio lab one more time, and the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh? She opened it. Huh, Toka? Yeah. Sorry. Looks like it. Toko, are you okay? No, 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 she's not dead, is she? <gasps> you got your wish. It's cold. It's... It's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold, I think I might catch cold. That's so bad. It's so good. No, it's... <laughs> I love it. Why? Well, if you're taking naps like in places like this, I'm sure you will. Why? Because you didn't let me do the good voice. What? Were you the screaming voice? I was asleep. Ah, oh, I must have found it again. Mickey Mouse is better than screeching, I suppose. I beat you. I bet you were standing up there, staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Have you oh, reached that then what? Age? I am bothered. Straight up. <laughs> um. Okay, Mickey. Why did you pass out? Stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of like how I was like doing the tone inflections and shit. Like I've never heard Mickey Mouse sound this gay before. Straight up horny. <laughs> okay, why did you pass out? I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What do you? What did you do to Miss Marcy? <laughs> Oh, that's right! Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo Bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. You SOB! And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes. It's almost like a double memory. No, it's more like half. Oh, that was good. Huh? I want to know right now. What I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now, or I'll slit your throat. I don't know. Yakuza Runner Summer is doing his own investigation. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I assume so. Oh, I'm on fire. I knew it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how long it must be right now. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. No. <laughs> that was fun to do. Toko shot off eerie laughter echoing behind her. Ah, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There must be some reason for it. Jew is, I don't know, the body. It can only be Mikros. Fridge, it's open. I'm sure they were all shut last time I was here. This must be why she... Uh, right. her. You're back. She faints so easily. Kyoko. It's getting late here, isn't it? Are you Indeed. okay? I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. But listen, but listen about this room. Oh yeah, but it's... It's a morgue. Yeah, I know. I figured that out a long time ago. I knew it. I suspected this much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge and s seen what was in there. And well, there you have it. You knew she'd fainted? Indeed. Don't play dead. We gotta get through this. What if I really did die and then you were saying that and like, never we're gonna finish this thing. I was... Then um, I would end it there and I'd put a little end card saying, Hey, one of us died. <laughs> we can't finish this. Sorry. I was on my way here and then the, the internet rumor, then the internet myth would become the girl who was killed by, um... Danganronpa. Um, I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assume she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, 
the real reason became clear. I imagine she came here to investigate. And when she opened the slot there... That's when she saw the body and dropped like a bag of rocks. That's why... Why, why is everything got to be so difficult with her? Anyway, Anyways, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, Look good ahead. idea. Give me a hand with this. Doko approached the fridge, hands outstretched, but suddenly she stopped. What's Listen. wrong? Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Mukuro's corpse? Mukuro's body's in the fridge. Just like every other time. The mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because I assume we wouldn't be able to do it once uh, during the... Because the, I assume we won't be doing the class trial over so, again, I guess. You may be right. Either way, now I finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last oh. investigation. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a, cl a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then... Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there? That's it? Okay. Where's over there? Let's check out the tarps. Da, 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 da. Yep. Is he making the connection? Yep. He's making the connection between the two. Ah, uh, they just wanted us to wait till now to make the connection between the two tarps. Okay. I didn't actually need to press that. It would seem... Yeah, yeah, this blue light comes on when it's occupied. A nine and all... Okay, there are nine lights that are on. It's a fridge meant for storing dead bodies. I can't do it, I can't look inside. Okay. You done yet? I should ask Goku about the group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I want to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about the announcement Monokuma mm -hmm. made earlier. You mean the one about the hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Because Why not? The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve the mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I, could, I, should, I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? Gotta be it. There's no other explanation. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. You're really good with dead bodies. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make up my report brief. You'll make up your report? I'll make my report brief. <laughs> so what did you find? So did you find anything? I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely convinced of my findings. So that means neither of those, the explosion, the knife, nor the blow to the back of the head with the pipe thing, were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were already dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed through the knife, they had been struck with an object by a thick metal pipe, and they were covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option would be the other wounds. The file said they were is old. That right? Where does it say they're old? Because huh? all the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds? It makes it sound like they've been there forever. Like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But all we got, uh, the Monokuma file... But we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way she could have had anything to do with it. So then. But, what if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly, you can allow it as one of many possibilities, can't you? One of many. Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. 
Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many scenarios as possible. In other words, they envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work, but beyond using that to solve particular mystery, this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Gekko's account has been added. Hey. So if there's anything else to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Okay, come to think of it, there's one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, I listed her height and weight. So... How did she know that? I'm sure she'll say. Five foot seven, 97 pounds, vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get that all right? You remember all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. She probably just remembers. So then... Mm -hmm. You don't forget about you don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case, without a doubt, is Mukuro E. Kusaba. Mukuro Kusaba's profile has been updated, so she's and? definitely the victim. Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. so. Then. then looks like we have no further business with Mukuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh wait, are we not going to put the body back? I think it's kind of sad leaving it out oh. like this. Sad? Did, Did you forget she was once our enemy? A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. And for someone like that, what does she mean to be naive? Ah, ah, so then. Ah. I think we've done all we can do here. Back to our investigations, yes? Wait, hold on, I still have one more thing to do. Something needs to talk to Yoko about. Yep, that. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in the locker. And if I don't do it now, I could ju I just press circle and leave. Hey, Kyoko. I do have one last thing to ask. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to. Go ahead, then out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second Indeed. floor of the dorms? I do, yes. But to get into those lockers, you need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get uh, them open using that emergency I handbook. see. The one you found in the headmaster's and? hidden room. So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you said makes perfect sense. But there's something written inside. Something about the headmaster, about your father. If that's true... Could that mean? That video is real too? Video? Makoto. Makoto. I think everything is finally starting to fit together into a... To reveal a cohesive picture. Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking I, about? I need to investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way so... you can... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker. You watch this. It'll all make sense. A DVD. And it says, Class 78, Urgent so... Interviews. I found it in the hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have any time. I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means. So just watch it and see your, for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. 
Well, I guess that means there's something important. There's some important clue on this DVD. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Another ramble? One. I don't really want to ramble. So, as it turns out, the arrangement I made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. Oh no, because of the mastermind. However, but there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I, I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one reason to follow through on that. Gyoko's eyes burn with the fire of determination. Determination to defeat the mastermind. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if I had found my father. Sorry, I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? Why does it bother me so much to know he has suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She left out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with <sighs> sorrow. So that's for that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, hey. you're right. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you Lakota. mean? Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you can't, still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then. Anyways, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I better get going myself. Got the DVD from the Kyoko, go to AV room, got some hopeless truth. Uh, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst way from the world. I can have already lose. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Makoto! Sorry, I gotta go. What? She ran off so fast I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina, why? Why won't you talk to me? Please talk to me. Or maybe he's in the library. Of course he is. Who'd have thought Biakio would be in the archive library places? He's never there. Oh, Biakio. Listen, do you think we could talk? Biakio? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Byaku, wait! But of course he didn't wait, he just walked away. What the? Why is he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. The only one who wasn't trying to avoid you was Kyoko. What does that mean? She's the only one who didn't go get the hint? Hmm. She did very specifically say that. What do you find that you're, you were the mastermind the whole time? Well, there's a game that has a, a twist like that. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well then, I better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it into player. It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on screen. It stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds, but it felt, but to me, it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who okay, knows how then. long, and there she was. Are you ready to begin? The voice I had heard was the man position is on one side of the screen. It was the voice I of a middle-aged man. But I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. Time a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Saika's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you substitute, guys. Substitute, sorry. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Um... You want me to accept that? Saika was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life I, in this school? I accept. Thank what? You. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, 
I give you my word. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up until now, but this and only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I heard, because I know how much Sayaka wants to get out of here. I know how much she wants to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends. She wanted it so bad, she tried to frame me for murder, so why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there to think about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor of the video I thought was finished, flashed back on screen. My eyes started back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Huh? Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed to be a fairly normal conversation, but then the I in the here and now had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him now, like this. Shall we get straight to the point, Makoto? There's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. I got it! Don't yell. <laughs> this can't be real. I said yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, you don't have much of a choice, do you? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Yakua. Is he gonna go through all of them? Toko. I gotta pay. Oh. When this is done. Hina. Everyone. They all said that they'd agree to live here in the school forever, and then. Kyoko. Her interview with him had just been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope Speak Academy, her father, and when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted life within the school, just go go. Interview was wrapping up. The monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently been turned off, which of course meant the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie, looks like it broke out of service. Wait, it just so happened it just so happened to break Too down bad. now? Now then, when doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere in time. That's what failure is, right? Failure, my ass. You cut the power on purpose. Oh, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it would be more of the same. Probably. He'd ask them this question. They all say, yes, I couldn't help myself. I fell out of I let out a huge, exasperated sigh, and as I did, I remembered something. That's right. Uh, she faints as she knows a, faint, a strange see. feeling of disconnect. And that's when she hey. found her memory was gone. A convenient outcome, something that seems so obviously to work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? So what about the others? Have we all forgotten, or...? I didn't see Hero in that. God, if he's the mastermind, that's a lot of cock and ball. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay, then. This is the end. 